Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Montana Courtside. Mike Lingenfelter, Randy Lee Gardner, your host. Uh, we're going to hit on the past week highlights. We talked about Ron Colley versus Perry Meridian. Ron Colley beat him in three close ones, 20, 20 23, and 20 for the three scores. This Perry Meridian team is for real. They're, they're for real. Ron Colley, uh, we've been touting their praises all year long. Uh, both of us picked Ron Colley. Rebels, thanks for backing us up. <laughs> On Wednesday night, Noblesville played uh, Carmel. Carmel had swept them pretty easily, it looked like. Yeah, Noblesville, one of the most improved teams in the state of Indiana. I, I said last week Steve Hawthorne has gone in and really uh, kind of put put together a, a nice package. They've always been on the fringe, close here, missing a player there. Noblesville is very good. I alluded to the fact that I still think they're a year away, uh, and I think Hawthorne will get them there ultimately. Carmel just too good right now. Yeah. Thursday night, we had Brownsburg versus Westville, which... Bad news, we both didn't pick the winner, right? Well, Brownsburg won we, five. We went with, uh, we were afraid that Stacy Pinar would pound on both of us, if, of us if we picked against him. Uh, Brownsburg, we did allude to being a, one of the top teams in the state coming into last week, and they're right on the cusp again. Great victory for Brownsburg, and they're right where they need to be. Yeah, on Saturday, Cathedral invite. Cathedral ended up beating Avon in the championship. There were really a lot of great matches. Perry Meridian, I watched those guys play. Really a great team. Uh, competed very well, went three with Cathedral. Newcastle was on the French, went three sets with a lot of the teams, but uh, Cathedral ended up winning it straight to the final. Uh, Cathedral's, uh, you know, we both talked about coming into that. Cathedral's starting to hit their stride a little bit. Um, still got some ball control things they got to fix, but to, you know, that, that once again, one of the better tournaments in the country on, on Saturday. Cathedral comes in, kind of rolls through people, but everybody else had their fair share of battles. A lot of the three games set. And I'm telling you, it's, the state championship's still wide open. I, I, Cathedral is a team that I think is still in the catbird seat, so to speak. But I think that, you know, this tournament shows you. You know, everybody was about a point or two away from being in the championship of that, yeah. that, uh, that tournament. We're going to go ahead and the uh, player of the week this week. I'll let you go ahead and hit on it, Mike. We go with Melanie McHenry, uh, out of Speedway, a junior. A couple of years ago, I was at the state uh, meetings, and they're they're selecting all stars. And this young lady's name came up, and you know Scott McQueen stood up and said, pretty much said, "Hey, this kid's pretty much a, a stud." And no one really knew who she was at the time. I looked at her stats, and they were phenomenal. These stats blow you away. You know, 109 kills on the weekend in four matches. That's that's the real deal. I, that's We've talked about all these kids every week and some of these gaudy numbers that are being put up. 453 kills on the season. You said she leads the state of kills. You know, Melanie McHenry is the type of kid that, uh, you know, she's obviously swinging at every ball in the front row and pretty much everything in the back row. I have seen her play in the club season. This kid is really a special player. So, you know, you can read off the rest of those numbers. They're phenomenal. Yeah. Almost at 400, 399 around the dot. 221 digs, so she has to be doing some defensive work also. So it seems like a, a phenomenal weekend, but more importantly, a great season. You know, people don't realize 399 is crazy. Oh, yeah. 300, it's, it's much like baseball. You know, if you hit 300 in baseball, you're a stud. Uh, the last man to ever hit 400 in baseball was Ted Williams in the 50s. And then all of a sudden, I'm looking at this kid hitting 399. That is a huge number. And... Uh, Kudos to Melanie McHenry. That's what a stunt. That's a great week. Uh, you know, these things are kind of neat. This player of the week and some of the highlight people you've picked out. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm in the Haley Ferris fan club now. And, you know, I, I love looking at those numbers she threw out. And then uh, you threw out Allie Denneman last week and a freshman to watch. I went out and got a chance to see her play. Man, she's special. She's a flyer and, and she's as good as you advertised. Uh, Melan, Melanie McHenry has been doing it for a couple of years. Unlike those, she is a bona fide player, and she's going to be a star. She's going to be one of the best players in the state of Indiana next year. Next, uh, we'll go with GearMontina.com. This week, we're coming back to buying or selling. First of all, we're going to hit on you buying or selling the key to winning a state title, the net play. You know, this state, for across the board, everybody's got the big-time hitters. Cathedral, you know, we talked about those guys loaded. What are your thoughts? Buying or selling on that? I tell you this, the court is, is 30 feet long. The front 10 feet of it is genetic. That's where all the big kids live. That's where the big jumpers live. But the back 20, which is two-thirds of the court, last time, I'm not very good at math, 
but 20 feet is two thirds of the court, and that is where your ball handlers live. That's those are guys that win based on will, they win based on skill, based on effort. Uh, it's a non-genetic area. I'm a, I'm selling. I think the net play in this state is overrated. Every single year, I do the TV and somebody comes up. Well, we got to control the net. Get a clue. Get a clue. You don't have to control the net. You need to control the ball. The first contact dictates the winner. First contact skills, how you pass it, how you serve it, will dictate the winners. You look at how up and down the best teams in the state have been all year long. They can't handle the ball. There's no one in the state on a regular basis that's handled the ball. Like I said, I think Ron Colley is the closest to handling the ball well day in and day out. Whoever in October and November can take care of the ball will win. I don't care you can have six foot ten kids across the front row, but if the ball never gets in front of the ten foot line, it negates everything. I go with the, I'm, I'm selling on that. I don't buy that at all. Next one, buying or selling after the winning the 1A showdown is the West L. Callen sectional winner, the favorite for the state title in 1A. Callen made to the championship against West L. They took down LCC, another title contender on a regular oh, basis. Lafayette, yeah, they're, they're very good. They're very good year in and year out. I, with all due respect to Christian Academy, I want to send you guys some love. Uh, Christian Academy takes down uh, my beloved Wapahani this weekend in the Heritage Christian Tournament. Congratulations to Heritage, Heritage Christian for winning that event. Uh, Christian Academy, all they've done is won every game, every match except for one. I think they're very good. Uh, they got a bunch of Kiva kids on that squad, and they're blowing it up. Uh, Bar Reeve has still got to be considered, uh, you know, they're the chance until somebody beats them. I'm, I'm buying. I'm buying because I said the first show we ever had that West Dell was my favorite, not only to get back, but they were my favorite to win the uh, the state championship in 1A. You know, it, it, as long as Sutton and Prather and Petro and those kids are doing what they do, they're as good in the middle as any 1A team I've ever seen. When Sutton is on, she's as good as any player in 1A. When Petro has got it all locked in, she sets it as well as anybody. Kinsey, uh, Prather, Lansing are putting the ball on the dime. I'm going Westell. Go Warriors. <laughs> I'm buying. Game of the week. We're going to go ahead and jump into it. This week we wanted to hit on the Delaware County. It's it's the pride and joy of this area, but more importantly, it's it's been known statewide. So we're going to go ahead and hit on it, but I also want to give me input on that. But, uh, the Delaware <laughs> County tournament is uh, – you know, I remember when I first got into coaching, somebody had made reference. It was a single-class system. And they said that, you know, if you won the Delaware County Tournament, it was almost as prestigious as winning the state championship at that time. Uh, it is, it's a long-standing tournament. It's a tournament that's had incredible uh, uh, lore over the years. Some great coaches, some that have passed on. And, but uh, year in and year out, it's, it's been a significant event. I think volleyball is a little bit down this year in uh, Delaware County. Last year we didn't put a team in the state championship for the first time ever. First time a, a 2 a state championship had ever been won by anybody other than a Delaware County team. Uh, you know, so it, it loses a little bit, but I tell you what, you can't tell anybody that. You're going to go into Wapahani's gym. It's going to be roughly 600 degrees in that place. It's going to be packed, but I'm telling you what, Satan will run around in there. It's going to be hotter than heck. Uh, and I think the play is going to be good. You know, I talked to Jared Richardson this weekend. He's He coaches Wapahani, the defending county champions. And I asked him if he had a chance. And he said, you know, he wasn't sure until Westdale beat Delta the other night. Now he looks at it and he says, you know, anybody can win. This is anybody's ball game. And I agree with him on that. Yep. So we're going to go ahead and hit on it. You give us your, uh, your thoughts. I already have mine. October 2nd, the first game, Yorktown versus Westdale. It's going to be a good game. I think I'm going Yorktown. Well, I tell you what, Yorktown's gym is the best air-conditioned gym in Delaware County. They're going to come into uh, into Wapahani in the little hot box. Uh, it's a little bit cooler uh, at the start of the event. I'm going to go Yorktown with the victory there. The uh, the Penguins prevail. I go Yorktown over Weston. A good match, better than what most people think. Yeah. The second match, October second, it'll be Delta versus Wapahani, which is also a sectional kind of preview coming up. Uh, but it's it's interesting. I think Delta will win just based on I'm going with them. I think Wooden will be be great. We'll see what happens. Delta is the deepest team in Delaware County. Uh, deepest when I say talent at each position. Right? 
Delta is also, believe it or not, probably one of the most uh, experienced teams in Delaware County when you start to think about club and uh, high school experiences. You know, what, last year Wapahani really surprised a lot of people and took out them, some people along the way to win the county. I, I still believe Wapahani is significant in this event. If they won, it wouldn't surprise me, but I'm going to go Delta as well. Yep. Uh, October 4th, uh, Delville and Cowan got the buy. So Delville will see the winner of the Yorktown West Dells, so Delville and Yorktown. I think Yorktown's just too much for them. Delville's improved, yep. but uh, uh, that's, that's, uh, that's a Saturday morning spanking. Yep. I go Yorktown. Yep. Second game of that day will be uh, Cowan, and from what we said, it'll be Cowan versus Delta. Uh, the Fighting Ponchos took a game from Yorktown uh, last week, almost forced a fifth set. Uh, you never know what's coming out of those guys. They've been up and down most of the year. Uh, uh, just too much wooden, too much, uh, too much net play. Campbell, Wooden, Nichols. Uh, I, I go Delta. So do I. Then we set it up for the evening match, the championship. Yorktown versus Delta. We've seen it before, over and over again. They're going to see it later down the road. This is kind of the first matchup of the year. They have not played each other. So, Yorktown Delta. Who do you got? I go Delta. I go Delta in a, in a major upset. Uh, they haven't played this year. I think that's a big deal. Uh, I just, uh, I tell you, if I think if they get it all straightened up and, and Wooden gets on track early on, I just think that they're, they're a little more prolific at, at, at certain positions. Uh, they've got a little more terminal athlete. Now, I will tell you, no one plays better defense than Yorktown High School. Uh, Step Plum coaches it better than anybody. Uh, Yorktown will come in and look at this event as theirs to lose, but I, I, I think in a major upset, I go Delta. Yep, and I, and I think it's going to be a great game. That's what I had down, Yelp Delta. I think they're going to win a five. I think it's going to be a barn burner. I think it's going to be just like it was the last couple of years with Delta. And uh, I thought for sure you'd say Yorktown. Yep. That's one of the main reasons up. I was going Delta. <laughs> I'm staying Delta. I, 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 like, uh, I like both of those teams. I think both of those teams are going to make noise come state time, too. Yep. The next part we're going to go to the courtside top ten. Uh, good news is, for the first time in a while, the number one team, well, we'll get to that later down the road. But you want to hit on any team you want to talk yeah, about? Yeah, you know, I, I, we keep talking. Uh, honorable mention, I like Fort Wayne Carroll. Uh, you know, every week I keep looking and waiting. You know, I think they're in that part of their season where they're, they're just beating on some people. I can't wait till they get into a little meteor part, but I do know they beat up on Belmont, and I like that. But Fort Wayne Carroll's in, in my honorable mention. Delta crept into our top ten. Got bounced out by the fighting Biff Wilsons, but I still like that team. I think a big win this week could put them back in it. County championship. County championship would, would help them. Yorktown would be on my honorable mention this week. I think they're closing, and all they've done is win. All they ever do is win. You know, Steph is uh, struggling through one of uh, the tougher years of her career, and I think she's lost four times. You know, that's probably more than she's lost in the last four years combined. But. Incredible coach, incredibly consistent program. I have them in there. I think this week can go a long ways to prove them where they fit in our top ten. In Brownsburg, all they keep doing is beating people. At some point, we're going to have to put them in the top ten. Uh, I like Brownsburg, and I really like what they're doing as a program. Yeah, and I heard uh, against Westfield, they were just they had a great net play. Like we just talked about. We were wondering, just kind of speaking on that, but I heard they played really well in the net. Just blocked balls, got touches, and did some things. But, no. So we'll go ahead and hit it off number ten. I go Mishawaka Marion. You know, they roll in this weekend, they win the Muncie Central invite, they take down Yorktown in a close match. Um, like I said, Yorktown is, is young and they're still trying to figure out which end is up. And this Mishawaka Marion team right now has a handle on that. Uh, 19 and 2, you said they've won 14 yep. straight matches. Uh, you know, when you start putting together numbers like that at this stage of the game, that's impressive. They are very well coached, one of the best coached teams in the state of Indiana. Yep. Number nine. Barry Meridian, you had a chance to see him play this weekend. Uh, you know, I, I think that they're big. They're, they lost twice this weekend. Yep. Usually, you look and go, "Oh, they drop out." You know, hey, they lose to Cathedral. Then they they lose to Center Grove in great matches. You know, they've got some kids that can play. You know, I, I love how they set the ball. They're, I love their setter. Uh, you know, I think they're very well coached. They're a team that I don't. You know, I'd love to. It's like the uh, Christian Academy guys. They thought they were. You know, they were really kind of wanted to stay off the radar until somebody told me about them this week and how good they are. Perry Meridian's not going to stay off the radar either. They're no. too good. 
And then, like I said this past week, what they did is I, I walked in. It was it was kind of interesting. It was the end of the second set, and they were just really battling well with Cathedral and found a way to sl- slide out of the second set and win it and then go to three. And, and then just the bigger athletes got a little bit the, at the end. But really a great match, I thought. I think right. they're getting a lot better. Well, a them. lot of that is at this stage of the game, and coaches will cringe when I say this, but it's players tend to play to expectations. You know, we're not supposed to beat them, and that yeah. creeps into their mind. Perry Meridian's just got to get to the point where they get comfortable winning. They got to get used to winning, and it's it's kind of like getting a job. You can't get a job till you get experience. You can't get experience till you get a job. You got to learn to win, and Perry Meridian's right on the cusp of that, baby. I think they're awfully good. Yep. Number eight, I go Valpo. All they did this week was win, and winning is good. Winning is good, and Valpo is doing just that. Yep. Not too bad. Seventeen two, one of the top teams in the in the four A. Floyd's uh, number seven. <laughs> Got to the Laurel. Floyd Central, <laughs> that, jumping the gun on that. The Fighting Bart Pals, once they're much like uh, Perry Brady, and they took two losses. They took <laughs> took a loss to, uh, they were slumming it. They, they went lost, four with Assumption. Yeah, they went four with Assumption and lost and lost to Mercy. Mercy and Assumption out of Kentucky are two of the top five teams in the United States. Mercy is number one. Right? Yeah, they're, they're a tremendous team. You know, Floyd Central really biting off a, a major, a major hunk there. But you know, that's, that's the kind of competition Bart Powell plays. And nothing to be ashamed of. They lose to Assumption Mercy. They beat Jennings County. They stay at seven. Yep. Number six? Center Grove. Center Grove, and, I, and, and you know, I know they're still ranked nationally. Uh, yeah, they, they did a, a beautiful, they had a beautiful week. You know, they, they lose to Avon. Yep. You know, they lose to Avon, and uh, there's nothing to be ashamed of. You know, I'm a big uh, a proponent of Avon, but Center Grove drops a little this week. Only because they lost to a team that was below them. Yep. Number five, Avon. Avon moves up to five, and they're back in that top five place. And you know, hey, don't be surprised. You know, the only team they lost to this week was Cathedral. They beat Penn. They beat New Albany. Avon is. I'm telling you, every single year starts to shift gears right around now. Yep. Right in, getting into the start of October, Scott is a master at peaking his teams. Uh, Avon is right where they yeah. want to be. And like we talked about last week, at the end of the week, they beat Cathedral. Yeah. And then just followed up this week losing in the championship. So not a bad loss. Every time. single week, if you look at it, they've got six losses. Every single week, they've played somebody of magnitude. And that's, that's Scott McQueen's recipe. He's going to play as tough a schedule as anybody in the state. And when it comes time to put down your chips, that cat's usually in the hunt. Yep. Number four? Carmel. That's Avon. It's hard to talk about Avon and not talk about Carmel. They've been uh, tied at the waist for the last couple of years. Uh, you know, they uh, they beat Noblesville. I talked about Noblesville earlier in the show. A very very good team. Uh, Carmel's in that that run right now where they've really got to got to. They're in a little bit of a lull and they've got to find ways to keep motivating themselves. Uh, one way you can motivate yourselves, Carmel, is there's still three teams ahead of you in this poll. Yep. Number three. Number twenty nine in the nation. Uh, Big week for Cathedral, six and zero this week. That's a busy week. Yep. Uh, you know, and, and there's some there were some big time wins in there, including Avon, Columbus East, Perry Meridian, Newcastle, Ben Davis with Catino. That's a good week. That's a good week, no matter how you look at it. You know, in most places, you're eighteen and four. You go six and zero and beat the three or so ranked teams. You're moving way up. Cathedral. Here's what I want to tell you. It's it's the plague of the Irish. Uh, I heard tonight that my uh, Fighting Irish in Notre Dame drilled Syracuse last night, dropped one place in the poll. They went from number eight in the nation to number nine in the nation. So to stay consistent, Cathedral, you stay at number three because I'm, you know, if my Irish are going to drop one, I'm keeping the other Irish in the same slot. Yeah. Number two? Ron Colley. You know, I, they, beat, uh, they beat Perry Meridian this week. They're 22-2. and two. You know, Like I said, if, if they get healthy and they take care of the ball, it's good. I tell you, man, October is good. the end of October is going to be a, a, just an absolute blast. I, I can't wait to do this show then. Ron Colley is as good as anybody in the state. They're 47 in the nation. They're number two in our poll. Yeah. Number one, Providence. Yeah. Providence, you know, uh, like I said, all they do is win. Now, they only had the one win this week. They're 21 and two. The 31st best team in the country. Terry Perica squad. Uh, they're, they're consistent and steady in every single spot. Uh, they're taking care of the ball, and as long as they take care of the ball, they're going to take care of the, the uh, net play as well. 
uh, like I said earlier, and not just because Muncie is known for the whole ball control defense thing. Those guys in the back 20 feet of the court are probably as steady as anybody in the country. The number number one, two, and three right now are probably the steadiest teams in the state of Indiana in regards to taking care of the ball. Yep. I think right now Providence and Roncalli are the best in the state at taking care of it. That's not to say that the Cathedrals, Carmels, Avon, Center Groves, that they do take care of it. You know, put out, pass out the helmets, Katie bar the door, somebody's going to get hurt. But right now, those three teams they are handling the rock better than anybody else. Like you just talked about, Providence, they're just so consistent day in and day out. Yeah. Like I talked about last week, how they just don't make mistakes. You know, they get those teams to five and below on a regular basis. Well, the old Steve, the the old Steve Shondell teams, you yeah. talk, or sports performance at club. You know, people ask all the time, you know, what is it they do? It's not what they do. It's what they don't do. Yeah. They don't do stupid things. They don't make stupid mistakes. They don't give you points. What you get, you earn. And stingy teams, teams that don't give up things and don't make mistakes, are built and live in the back 20. Yeah. All right. Thing yeah, I want to close in a, on a, a fairly somber note. Uh, you know, I'd really like to uh, pay my condolences to Brian Hawkins' family. Uh, Brian Hawkins was uh, a coach, a teammate, uh, a good man. And uh, for me, more importantly, he was a very good friend, a very loyal friend. Uh, Brian Hawkins, the head coach of Cecina High School, and like I said, uh, a wonderful human being, teammate, passed away in a a tragic auto accident earlier uh, last week, and uh, I, I really want to uh, let the volleyball world know that uh, we lost a great coach, haven't gained one, but uh, we we lost a better person. So, with that said, you know, uh, condolences to Brian's family, and uh, we'll see you guys again next week.